So I'm here in the Brazilian rainforest, uh, and I just found out that they did another UA. And let it never be said that Archetype Builds doesn't answer the call. So this UA seems to have been uh, a little bit more like brass tacks, like just the changes kind of a, a playtest. There's only 30 pages, which is a, a little strange after the huge playtest we've been getting all this time. Um, and the big heavy hitters are changes to the Barbarian, to the Monk, and new spells. Um, there are some small changes to Druid though, let's go through those now. The big call out is that now all Druids are going to get some temporary hit points when they Wild Shape, not just the Moon Druids, which is great. The Moon Druids have a rather sizable chunk of changes in this UA. Um, basically, they are streamlining the way that the AC works. There's no longer any question. It's it's just going to be a 13 plus your Wisdom modifier. Um, they're streamlining the HP. Now Lunar Strikes is going to let you uh, make this uh, kind of extra radiant damage for each attack. And there's a really cool interaction between their class spell list and their wild shape. Now any uh, spell on their class spell list, they can cast freely while in wild shape. For the Barbarians, um, they are shamelessly ripping off the success of Cunning Strikes. Um, it's really obvious that uh, when that feature came out, that folks wanted more of that. Um, so they are now basically, instead of trading sneak attack damage die for special effects, you are trading your advantage from uh, your reckless attack. You can do this essentially to either move an enemy 15 feet away or to slow them by 15 feet. Then at later levels, you're going to get the ability to kind of daze an enemy, which gives them disadvantage on their next saving throw, which is a big deal and robs them of opportunity attacks. You're also going to be able to tee up a team member to strike that opponent um, by giving the next attack against that creature a bonus equal to your rage bonus. Generally speaking, advantage is going to be better than your rage bonus, so you must really need this other person to hit. Maybe that's Paladin or Rogue or something like that. Barbarians are also getting rages back more often. They've got this nice little once a day uh, refresh your rages um, that we will see a pattern of um, across the classes. Um, so overall, some nice boosts to uh, Barbarian. One of the things I'll note is that these features replace Brutal Critical. What, what I love is that this really opens up the ability to have some frontline capability, right? These are frontline tactical options that you're introducing to the class. I love to see that kind of niche support. And um, if you are a basic player and you just want to do your normal Barbarian things, to be honest, advantage on each attack is probably better than most of these options most of the time. But we're all here for the monk changes. Here's the question, is this enough for the monk? I'm kind of surprised they didn't uh, lean too far to the other direction when they made these changes. There's actually some relatively uh, subtle changes to the monk structure but I think you'll see that it has a big impact. So one of the biggest things is right at second level, your martial disciplines um, have been reworked slightly. So uh, Flurry of Blows is exactly the same, but uh, you will see that your Step of the Wind and your Patient Defense each have a free option. For Patient Defense, I think it's um, Disengage, and for Step of the Wind, I think it's Dash. Uh, and then you can spend one key point to add an additional feature to them. So that's um, adding a dodge action to your patient defense or adding a disengage action to your uh, step of the wind. This is nice, but remember, you know, Rogue gets all this stuff for free anyway. So what you're really looking at is spending a discipline point for the action economy of doing two bonus actions in a turn. And they do have some amount of synergy with each other, right? The other thing that we have is our uh, metabolism feature, which is our once a day regenerate everything. And this now regenerates uh, your discipline points as well as a little bit of health. And it comes online right at second level, which is so, so critical in my evaluation of this feature. The low levels are exactly when you're hungering for those discipline points. Um, at higher levels, getting back on every short rest, having, you know, 15 or so points to spend, um, and especially with these cost reductions that they've introduced, I think that you are not hurting for discipline points at higher levels. But at low levels, you are. So dragging this feature down to second level is huge for the class. I still think the meditate action would have been better. And you can check out my Is the Monk Enough video um, to see how I would have changed the monk. But this is nice. The other thing they've done is they've added an effect of Stunning Strike where it actually does damage on a successful save. So that means you're doing something either way. And this gamble just got a whole lot better. So 
I personally would be doing this every chance I got, which is still just once per turn. Now, if those were the only changes that were made to the monk, I would say that it still falls short. Uh, these little boosts are nice, but they are nowhere near conquering the huge power gap between monks and other classes. Where I think this starts to turn around, though, is level 10. And I have never seen a level that is more critical to the power boost of a class, I think, ever. So that comes in the form of a new feature and a big power boost to all of those martial disciplines we just talked about. The one I love the most, of course, is that Flurry of Blows is now one discipline point for three attacks. That's right, three attacks as a bonus action for one discipline point at level 10. That means that an unarmed monk is now making five attacks a turn, and that is huge for the fantasy of the unarmed martial arts monk. Patient Defense is getting a nice chunk of temporary hit points, and given that you're already getting the disengage and the dodge action, um, it's really good. Two rolls of your martial arts die, which you know is, is pretty decent at this level. Um, and then your Step of the Wind, you are actually going to be able to take someone with you. You can take a willing ally with you as you dash around the battlefield. What a fun and flavorful way to increase the power of this feature. This is incredible for utility, and no longer will you be the lone wolf with your crazy uh, movement speed options. Now the monk actually gets to help. You can imagine, like, ferrying people across by burning some of these key points um, off of, like, a river, because you can run on water, or, like, up a wall, or something like that. I think this is going to be a phenomenal change um, to the class. So those, all three of those happen, right? Well, you, you choose each turn which one of these options you're doing, and then you get that enhanced version, and they've all got extra juice to them. And you get more discipline points than ever before, and I think that's phenomenal. But also, get another feature at 10th level, and it's really good. Um, you can now just end a condition on yourself at the end of each turn. It doesn't require an action. You don't roll any dice. You just do it. Um, you do the Charm, Frightened, and uh, Poison conditions are the, are the only three options you can choose, but those are very, very common um, effects that your character can be hit by. So that's incredible. I mean, it's really, really good. And um, combined with that other, you know, boost at 10th level, and you're continuing to gain those discipline points and, and increasing your martial arts die, which factors into all of that, I think they did it. I think we got there. We caught up with, you know, the, the other classes in terms of um, your spread across frontline and utility and damage. Um, I don't know if this is going to 100% meet the expectations of players who, who have been longing for a good monk for a long time. I think maybe people were kind of hoping that it would, like, leapfrog its way to the front of the class tier list. I don't think it has done that. But I do think it is caught up with the others um, and is in the pack. And remember that those subclasses are also seeing some improvements uh, and some boosts. So you could be looking at some really great options with the monk in this 1D&D &D new book. Finally, on to spells. Um, so the first thing they did is they took all of the conjuring spells. Um, the, the conjuring. Um, no, you know, conjure celestial, conjure wooden uh, beings, and of course, conjure animals. Um, these are spells that are critical to the game as it exists now. I've used them in my builds a ton of times, and they've changed them drastically, dramatically. They are entirely new spells. Generally speaking, the way that these work now is you kind of uh, go from summoning a bunch of stat blocks to creating an aura of effect. So that a lot of them will read like, you conjure a celestial presence in this area, and it does this kind of stuff. Um, or you, you summon a bunch of spirits that kind of flit about in this area and have this effect, similar to like spirit guardians, right? Now, now well, at least a couple of the spells uh, give that entity, that effect, the ability to either like take an action or, or make a reaction or something like that, um, which is cool, but it is not anywhere, not the same spell. They are, they are entirely different spells. All of the conjuring spells are new and different. 
I'm excited to play with this new version, but it cannot be understated how much of a change this is for the game. I mean, a lot of the best damage builds, a lot of the like kind of wonkiest strategies in the game relied on these spells. So I think this is ultimately a good change for the health of the game, but this is actually quite a different paradigm that we're finding ourselves in. The other thing they did with this playtest is they really seemed to take aim at healing spells and wanted to make them better. A lot of the weaker healing spells, basically everything but healing word, they, uh, they went ahead and just doubled the healing on, on a lot of those spells. So like um, Cure Wounds went from 1d8 to 2d8. Upcasting is also 2d8 per spell level, which is pretty significant when you think about it. I um, mean, it's true for Mass Healing Word and for, for a lot of the other ones. Um, so they really want to give healing a boost in this version of the game. The other thing that they uh, did is they introduced a couple new spells. Font of Moonlight is a fun new buff spell where you emanate some light, deal extra radiant damage every hit, and can blind attackers who damage you, which I think is hugely helpful. Um, you're also going to be able to pick up uh, Power Word Fortify, which is a big 7th level spell, and it gives you this huge 120 points of temporary hit points that you can spread around to allies as you wish. Now remember, temporary hit points don't stack, and mean DMs will say that the, the last one comes overrides the one before. So you want to be careful after you cast this spell, or you'll wipe out like 80 points of temporary hit points um, by, uh, you know, doing a little false life or something before combat. Our last new spell is a cantrip, Starry Wisp, which is a fun little radiant uh, ca damaging cantrip that negates uh, invisibility for a round. So it's a great like tech cantrip against invisible enemies if that's a big problem for you. So overall, I was surprised by how small this playtest was. What this really indicates to me is that um, they are honing in on the last changes that they want to make. They're focusing only on the ones where the feedback scores weren't very good. Everything else is probably headed to print. Um, so we are really like narrowing down on, on what we're working with here. Um, I wish we had a little bit more time to play test these, uh, this new Barbarian feature. They, it, it looks good, but you know, it, it's one of those things where like the balance of everything, how realistic it feels, how does it pace up to, to what the Barbarian's actually trying to do. It's difficult to judge in this uh, just a couple of week window we have to to give feedback. Obviously, they're still continuing to tinker with the druid. We, we get more um, forms known, and they assure us that there's going to be more beast forms available in the in the DMG. But you know, what are those forms like? We we should be able to see some of this stuff, um, and we just can't. And I don't think we will by the end of the playtest. Still, overall, these are good changes. Um, all of them. Uh, you know, the monk is is better. The variant is better off. Druid is better off, and these new spells seem good. I kind of was hoping for more. Um, I was hoping for more changes, more explanations, more spells. I, I, mean, I would have been happy with like a playtest packet of 60 new spells that they'd come out with. But um, yeah, I mean, every, all of this stuff is good, but I think the, the, the time in between playtests and the tiny amount of scope that they seem to have chosen indicates to me that we are wrapping up this 1D&D &D experiment, and we are headed towards the new 5th edition. Thank you guys, and I will see you next week with a video.